Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 74th show for Get Out of Rap TV, your show all about our contact center community and CX as well. We talk about that a bit as well, don't we? A uh, great show lined up for you today with a very special Gal X, our little take on TEDx. That is coming up shortly. But first, let me start by thanking my partners because without them, I would not be able to do anything. I'll start with DDC Outsourcing Solutions, the people I do DDC discusses with. Uh, we have OneCom, lovely Katie and Nick, and Neris, who I did a great webinar, and EvaluAgent, love EvaluAgent. We are going to be doing something very special with them uh, very shortly on this show. Now, when it comes to partners, as you know, I couldn't do anything without them. And uh, in my pursuit of trying to keep going and producing content for you, I'm always on the lookout for partners who I share values with, who maybe are a bit disruptive, trying to do something uh, a bit new. So you'll be pleased to know there is another VT coming up right now. I'm very pleased to say that I am now have a new partner, and that is Better Outsourcing. We are better.com. Uh, this is a, a new venture in the outsourcing world, and it is being driven by Richard Knox. I've known Richard a few years, and we've been talking all the time just about contact centers and how we can do things different. We have very similar backgrounds, so I'm absolutely buzzing to announce Better as a get out of rap partner and we are going to be doing some really interesting stuff together so watch this space now i've waffled on for a bit let's start with let's get to know each other a little bit better the question to get us off and running is say hello in the comments and which comedian or comedy makes you laugh here we go so shane is here Schmau, good morning all. I'm assuming, Scott, that that is Welsh. Deepak, thank you for joining from New Zealand. That is amazing. And I will get back to you about catching up tomorrow, Deepak. Um, looking forward to that. Darren is here too. Good morning, Darren. Ah, lovely Kerry is here. Good morning, Kerry. We haven't mentioned oil barons for a while, but um, we will have to do that on your appearance on get out of rap so let's start with hello saying hello you've done done that some of you if you haven't yet added a comment let's just remind ourselves if your comments are not showing i'm not ignoring you please just refresh linkedin don't leave uh but please do come back kerry's kicking us off i love mickey flanagan we're not out we're out out right <laughs> which could apply to uh the England football team. Let's not mention that. Let's not mention that. Um, Aaron is here. Good morning, mate. Aaron Sharples. Paul Smith, the scouser, cracks me up. I see a lot of his stuff on TikTok. He's very funny with the crowd interaction, isn't he? Um, I, I will also share with you my, my, my one that I listen to ad infinitum on repeat is... Um, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington, and Stephen Merchant, when they all the way back from when they were on XFM, I listened then. Their podcasts are hilarious. And I, I know them word for word pretty much, but I still find them them very, very funny. Who do you find funny? Dan is here. Good morning, Dan. Get your fingers typing. Who makes you laugh? Ah, oh, there we go. David, me and you are cut from the same cloth. Good morning, everyone. The Office UK still gets quoted at least once a week, I would say. Very, very true. Good morning, sir. Good to see you. And uh, what what a show that was. I do remember when that first came out. Believe it or not, I was working in a contact centre in Slough. So <laughs> it was very apt. And in fact, one of my colleagues asked if she'd, when she said, I was saying, oh, have you seen The Office? She said, yeah, it's just a weird documentary. <laughs> it's not a documentary. Um, Lewis, 
Good morning, sir. Lewis Murphy says, Kevin Bridges, Ricky Gervais, Mickey Flanagan, Kevin Hart. I could go on. And Darren is in with Ricky Gervais, Kevin Bridges. Look at this. Mickey Flanagan, Lee Evans, etc., etc. Oh, Dan is coming up with a good one here. Bottom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the long, the lo- the the very missed Rick Mail there, uh, and Adrian Edmondson. Great, that was very funny, wasn't it? Very, very funny. Um, please do keep these coming. Who? What makes us laugh? Uh, I, I'm no judgment here, but I, I'm sure I saw once that um, is it called Mrs. Brown's Boys was in like the top five ever of. Um, British comedies, and I just couldn't believe that was, was that Russian interference with that with that election because I, I've seen bits of one and just it wasn't for me. But that's the thing with comedy, isn't it? It, it either works for you or it doesn't. Kerry Sudale says I love the Ricky Gervais Afterlife, but was never a fan of The Office. There you go. Well, Afterlife, I can't watch. It. Yeah, it's uh, kind of um, I, I can't watch that without shedding a tear. To be honest, it's very very funny, but also. Uh, very very moving um drop dead fred still makes me laugh every time i watch it still cobwebs <laughs> yeah drop dead fred these are great blasts from the past there's nothing too modern here either is there maybe that's a a sign of our age now then moving on because like i say we have got oh darren is here good morning darren great to see you great to see you my friend very, very busy man. I'm, I'm loving all your content on uh, LinkedIn for everything you guys are doing over there. Okay, so it's time for another VT, which I know we all love. Oh, hold on. Mickey Flanagan. He is definitely winning. Everyone is loving him. I wonder if that's uh that could be... I've never done a poll on LinkedIn. Maybe I should do uh, a poll and see if that's true for all of us in the contact center world, whether... Mickey Flanagan wins. Right. I have a guest waiting in the wings. Uh, this is going to be brilliant. It's going to be very topical. Uh, for those of you that have seen this before, here we go. We are ready. I'm very pleased to welcome my mate, Rob Wilkinson from Evalue Agent. Rob, welcome. How are we? We good? Very, very good. I'm gobsmacked Jimmy Carr hasn't shown up. What's that about? I love Jimmy Carr. I think he's hilarious. That's who you would have gone for, is it? Yeah, yeah, I have to say. He is, he is very, I prefer him on, um, what does he do? Nine out of 10 cats do countdown. Yeah, that's a great alternative, uh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Rachel is here. Good morning, Rachel. And Jonathan. Hello, my friend. Good morning. Right. Well, what Rob, I class him as a good friend. He was uh there. Kerry's Kerry agrees with me. Look, the legend himself. Oh, yeah. There that's, you go. Can I go home now then? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You've peaked. <laughs> no, peak, no, peak, no, go. Yeah, no pressure. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <bye. laughs> See you later. Uh Rob was one of the people at my 50th surprise birthday. I spotted him as I came in and just thought, I can't, that's Rob. Rob is here. Um, it was, that was a, a great night. It was, a, it, it was a great night. Um, but we're not here to talk about my surprise 50th. We're here. Well, Rob, I'm going to hand it over to you to introduce a very a topic that we've talked about quite a lot on on the show and i know one that should generate a lot of interest but what are you going to be sharing with us on gaux today so um i'm going to be talking around uh, net promoter school um and basically the past the present and the future and just to kind of qualify that from a past perspective i've worked on the phones and team leading and operationally for a long time and i've, I've been involved with net promoter from that angle I've also been part of a tech firm startup that did voice of customer programs uh, for lots of other companies and helped them do them. So I've kind of, I've been for the most recent history. I'm now part of Evalue Agent and we're doing some crazy exciting stuff that might just be kind of the future of uh, Net Promoter. So that's hopefully a small qualification as to why um, I might have a, a little bit of an idea about some of the stuff that I'm going to share today. Yeah. 
Well, without further ado, I'm gonna I'll I'll be your co-pilot and number one cheerleader. Um, but okay, cool. <laughs> over to you, my friend. Um. So okay, I do believe I was originally given ten minutes for this. That's not going to happen. Um, so, so, so just warning you now. Uh, um, I will do my best. Ready and for I'll a three-hour? <laughs> yeah, maybe not quite that long, but I will speak quickly, probably, to try and um, get get him to the as close to that uh, marker as I can. Um, just uh, uh, some of my details on the. Feel free to connect if you want. Um, I'm happy to uh, connect with anyone in our world who I'm not already connected to, um, and uh, just trying to move this on okay so uh talking about the past i'm going to do you a very quick potted history of um this 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 metric um i figured this might be useful for people to maybe take some notes and do some searching because this might help you to uh, build a reading list around uh, kind of good some re useful resources certainly that i've used um in regards to this so number one uh, back in 2003 yes mps is 21 this year Woo, well, let's have a party. Um, so Fred Reichel, he's, this, is the, this is the guy who came up with it. Um, he did this as, in a business Harvard review, and he introduced the world to Net Promoter Score. Uh, that same year, Bain & Company, a big organization that basically promotes it and was part of the work that he did, um, started promoting Net Promoter to be used uh, a way of judging customer loyalty and business growth. Now, it was always meant to be a nice, concise, dead simple, single question that you ask, um, in order to get to the crux of uh, what might be making your customers tick. Uh, and when it came out, it was really, really, really kind of groundbreaking. Uh, fast forward five years, and um, the same people that are all involved so far introduced something called the Net Promoter System. So they were calling it MPS 2.0. Uh, and, and this was when they started talking around not just measuring things, but um, closing the loop on the feedback that you're getting from customers. And, so, and that was the first time they kind of really started to drive that. So in the early years, it was literally just getting the metric and trying to drive change with it. And then it was really tying it back to doing something for the customers that are based on what they were telling you. 2011, SAP Metrics, again, part of the, um, the organizations that sit behind the, the, the metric. Um, uh, they released a, a book called uh, Net Promoter Economics. So you might want to look that up because uh, that goes into a lot of detail around how you can link Net Promoter to financial outcomes, which is always super useful in our world because we, if we can ever prove a pound sign for something that we're improving, then it makes everyone's job a little easier, right? So uh, look that one up. So yeah, a couple of years later, 2013, uh, uh, the original found uh, creator, inventor, whatever you want to call him, uh, Reichelds, uh, released another book uh, called The Ultimate Question 2.0. That was co-authored by Rob Markey, if you're going to look that up. Uh, and basically, it was a, a bit of a, a an over, overview of the story so far after 10 years of being in existence, but they put a load of case studies in there as well. So sharing companies that were using this metric to good effect and, 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 and doing a great job with it. Um, sort of by 2016, uh, Net Promoter pretty much uh, used around the world by companies of all different sizes. It's not just a contact center thing, even though we absolutely embrace it, um, sometimes badly, but we'll come on to that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it, it, everybody uses it globally, measuring customer loyalty, and it, and, it, and it really does become, I mean, you've got people with uh, the Harley Davidson with really high sexy product have really high net promoters, and then everyone right down to your electric bill or your collections team uh, who maybe don't have such a high net promoter, but everyone was doing it, everyone was getting involved, and it was uh, it was the golden boy. Um, a few years later, starting to see early criticisms of Net Promoter coming in, um, initially around kind of cultural biases um, that come in as part of the survey approach and the methods of using of, of collecting the information, um, and also that it was uh, oversimplified. The thing that actually made it great in the first instance was then starting to be slated, and 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 because maybe people didn't understand it, or maybe because people weren't using it properly. I don't know, but. Um, Fast forward to the 2020s, uh, the now, and um, the advances in data analytics uh, uh, it means that we can now integrate Net Promoter in with all sorts of different tools and solutions like CRMs, business intelligence, QA tools, uh, all sorts of stuff. So 
that is my whistles top tour of uh, those. These slides will be available from a, a good retailer called Get Out of Wrap later on, I'm sure. Um, Globe 99. <laughs> so uh, if we talk about uh, Net Promoter, whether you're a critic or an advocate, um, I think whether, whether whether you're in either camp, th there are lots of people recognize a lot of common problems that exist with Net Promoter. So, um, what I thought I'd do was to try and demonstrate those by uh, showing the ones grouped by the stakeholders, so the people who actually use that metric, um, and, and just kind of see what everyone's thoughts are on that. So, uh, first of all, if I bring in the customers, obviously they're the, the main users of this metric. It's all, all ultimately all about them, or it should be. Um, they get uh, what we call survey fatigue in in the in this industry. It's basically too many surveys going out, surveys from every single company after every single interaction, um, and 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 there's a risk from that that people become very skeptical or frustrated by it. Um, couple that with a lack of change, which most customers um, cite as one of the reasons they um, they're not interested in in providing feedback because they never see anyone do anything with the. The feedback that they provide um, makes it a, 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 you know, a very skeptical place. Um, and interestingly, um, if you think about the fact that uh, the, the statistics show that our customers don't complain, they churn. Um, one in 26 un unsatisfied customers will actually um, make a complaint. I do have a link if anyone wants it to, to cite that, that, that statistic there. Um, and basically what that means is most people don't respond, and most of those people who aren't responding are not necessarily happy. So, um, so yeah, from a customer's perspective, it doesn't seem to be uh, all encompassing, shall we say. Uh, for the next one, it's the agents, the guys on the front line, the people who look after our customers. Um, you know, they are the really the biggest uh, you know touch point that we've got with our customers in in contact centres. Um, so why is it that uh, maybe agents have problems with this as a metric? So often they say sample size. I know size isn't everything, but if you take a thousand calls a month and you only get, say, 20 to 30 responses from surveys for you per month, you might consider that that's uh, not very representative of, of what you're doing. And you might have an argument there, uh, especially when you focus on an agent level rather than anything bigger picture wise. Um, statistical significance comes into play, and and I think agents know full well that, that that maybe it doesn't reflect them. Part of that is that quite often a lot of the issues that customers have um, are outside uh, the influence of an agent. Now I know a lot of people will argue that agents have influence over how those issues are dealt with and how those issues are resolved, and that's true, but. Ultimately, that's more of a delivery of the bad news rather than fixing the bad news itself. So there the quite rightly can be frustration from an agent when there's basically things that they can't do anything that impacts their scores. Uh, and all, overall, that can impact morale um, and, and that can have a negative effect on them. Um, and that's um, for agents when we don't even start to talk about some of the, the other sort of uh, negative ways in which a uh, net promoter is used. I'm still trying to get my cursor back over here. Sorry. Okay. The management team. Okay. So management team, operations management, we um, don't have a lot of alternatives, really. Um, the business decides that we're going to do this. Uh, the business puts it at the heart of everything. And all of that is with the best intentions. Um, but because there are problems with this approach, um, and we have to put up with it sometimes, and we just have to get on with it and, and, and make do. Um, worst case can become uh, a vanity metric where we all go, whoop, whoop, we've got a great score, aren't we brilliant? Um, uh, we don't necessarily look at the negative side. We don't look at the bad scores. We don't, we don't do real kind of resolution of problems or fixing things. Um, but because we've got, uh, you know, maybe higher score than the contact center next door, we think we need to celebrate and have awards. Um, I think that that's, that's um, it's great. To, to, to reward positive stuff, um, but sometimes when that's the only reason that a metric might be used, uh, maybe that's not the best motivation. Um, and uh, unfortunately, gaming the system. Um, if you if you bonus your agents on net promoters specifically, then I think you're doing it wrong. Um, if your agents are telling customers that, 
oh, look, uh, if you get a survey after this call, please give us a good score because um, it affects my bonus or whatever, um, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, you've missed the point um, and you maybe should go back to the drawing board. Um, and to that, I'm going to say one final thing. And Martin will be happy that I've done this. <laughs> yeah. I had to get this in because anyone who's ever listened to a Get Out of Rap with me involved in the background or a LinkedIn Live with me chatting, I, I talk about banana armor <laughs> probably more than I should. Um, <laughs> no, you so carry on. It, it, it's uh, the, the first and best ever girl band, I think, for, for me at least. Probably showing my age here. Um, uh, but they they had a big hit called It Ain't What You Do, It's The Way That You Do It. That's what gets results. And basically what that means is it, it, it's not the metric. It's not necessarily, um, you know, if I, if there are loads of contact centres that are using Net Promoter Score to good effect and there are loads of contact centres using Net Promoter Score to bad effect, then basically the difference between those two is the way that they're using that metric. So... I call it banana rama syndrome. I've, I've used it before, and I just had to get it on this slide. So, um, without further ado, I'll go into a little bit more detail about what that really means. Just I was I was kind of hoping you were going to sing it. <laughs> uh, well, maybe on the, if I get an encore or if I'm asked back, we'll, we'll maybe cry. I've, I'm, I haven't got time, Martin. We'll okay, a, a very strict headline. I am asking everyone else though whether you should sing that. Oh, are you going to do a poll? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so again, so we're talking about Net Promoter here. Now I'm talking about it as a metric uh, rather than, uh, sorry, the metric versus the method. So is it the metric that is it the metric's fault? So um, not necessarily. Is it this? Is it the method at which we collect the kind of the Net Promote score? Maybe that might be the problem. So um, if we could instead um, measure Net Promoter on every single contact, every conversation, and that's every channel, not just not just talk, uh, not just phones. Um, and if we could do that in a way that basically meant that there wasn't even any impact on the customer, uh, would that be a good thing? Um, well, if we were to use artificial intelligence, and I'm just going to say here, you know, side note, I know it's everywhere. I know that it's, um, I know that it's kind of been sold as a, a magic bullet for all sorts of stuff, but if you consider that um, where artificial intelligence really comes into play is when you've got lots and lots and lots of volume of stuff that you need to do that's repetitive, that um, is is basically can be done without uh, human oversight. If you get it right, um, then almost it's almost as if um, Net Promoter was one of the things that it should be used for. It's almost like the, one of the best possible use cases for it. And the reason for that is you get a 100% sample and immediately that does away with any of the risks of kind of statistical significance. And um, cherry picking, I guess. Cherry picking, gaming the system, all that stuff goes out the window. It doesn't. You don't even need to worry about it. It's like when we brought out 100% um, call, call recording 20 years ago, basically lots of people stopped doing silly stuff that they were doing on calls because they weren't going to get away with it anymore because we recorded all that stuff. I'm skipping to my next slide a little bit there, so I'll, I'll save that bit. But um, you're absolutely right, yeah. Um, gaming the system and, and 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 everything else that comes with uh, the cherry picking element. Um, so that makes it more representative, and you can have a higher confidence level in actually the decisions that you're making out of the back of what you're finding out from Net Promoter. So if you were to use AI to score all those interactions from a Net Promoter's perspective, um, you would get a much better kind of uh, result. Um, like I say, it's across 100% of the channels. That's super positive. I thought you can resolve the problems wherever they may lie. You can provide much more comprehensive coaching to your people on your team. Uh, and you can drive faster improvements when you're feeding back to other areas in the business because it's it, it's practically real time. It's live and it's 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 all in one place. So, um Oh, I've, I've, I've jumped, skipped through a couple ahead there. I won't go back because it probably take longer than the slides. Um, but it uses a prompt. Uh, so it, what it does is it, it's all predefined. It, it's uh, it's all it's the same every single time. There is there's no in, kind of intuition involved. It's all about a prompt, and that means that you get no bias at all whatsoever in terms of this method of collecting that promoter. Um, it means that you get 
absolute consistency in the scoring as well because um you you, you again it's uh, it's using a prompt that's clearly defined um and the feedback that you're getting is is more accurate um uh, because these these things nowadays that uh, they're changing every week but it's it's absolutely uh it's absolutely very precise uh even though it is a still a, a, a early days in terms of what we can what we can do with it um what i will say though is um in fear of doing a banana rama syndrome with using AI for anything, uh, we believe that AI should be used as a co-pilot, so not the kind of the only tool, not not one hundred percent automated. So we think you should always have a human element. That should be though um, basically something that is done in an efficient way because you've got the AI doing all the legwork, if you like. Um, that increases the efficiency. Um, it means you can focus really hard on those uh, things that are either high risk or high value to solve in the business. Um, and whether that's QA or net promoter that you're measuring using AI, um, that's that's the whole point. It's about focusing your efforts on the things that are going to have the biggest bang for buck. Um, and and yet yeah, XMPS at the bottom there, that's just what we're calling what we've built. Um, and that is an expected net promoter score. Um, whereby um, our solution um, takes the transcription or the text from a chat or whatever it might be, and it basically makes a, 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 a forecast as to what the the promoter status, sorry, the um, the net promoter status would be of, of, of that call based on a whole load of clever uh, things that I don't know how to do um, because that's way above my pay rate. So, that, so, Rob, can I just ask you? Does that mean then that that's all done without follow up with the the customer. So that's Absolutely. kind of re reducing that some of the things you mentioned before, like survey fatigue. Bang it's, on. It's a prediction based on the actual interaction. What a net promoter score may be. Yeah, there's a whole load of ingredients that go into how they make that prediction, but it's basically uh, something that's been built and worked on and honed uh beta tested uh checked against real live survey scores and, and all that stuff to kind of qualify it um i think at the minute and um, the last by the last check we're kind of confident that our accuracy rate is around 80 percent. so that's very strong um in this kind of thing mm. uh and and yeah you're absolutely right it means that uh you don't need to bother a customer because their voice is on those calls or those chats or those emails it, it, it is the voice of the customer because you're, you're listening to what the customer is saying on those interactions and you can basically then uh calculate uh, based on things that happen based on the sentiment uh, it, there's a there's a whole load of ingredients that i don't like the word algorithm <laughs> usually because i can't say it um but basically it's it's like an algorithm that that, that harnesses a whole range of things it's not just like looking for one thing it, it, it includes a whole range of things in order to make the decision uh and and yeah it's it's it's, it's really accurate um already so and, and it'll, it's only going to get better with, with time mm. as, as these things do um yeah does that answer your question yeah 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 definitely okay so uh am i doing for time i'm just really conscious that okay yeah not too bad <laughs> <laughs> okay final final one okay um so it's actually not uh it's it's not crazy that this is something that can happen right now so i'm going to very quickly with, uh, go through here so 20 years ago we brought in 100 percent call recording like i say that changed behaviors across the board when we did that um but how much of those 100 percent call recordings do we actually use right now how many of them do we have? maybe 10 percent if we kind of have problems or we have coaching requirements or if you know we get around to listening to them as part of our QA, we probably don't use 10% actually of the stuff that we've got recording. So kind of really neglecting that data. And however, over that 20 year period, other things happened in that all the people, everybody got really used to technology as well. If you cast your mind back 20 years ago to a phone that didn't have a camera on it, let alone could do emails or, or you know, buy a holiday or whatever else you do these days with phones. Um, that and home PCs and uh, technology is just absolutely adopted now and it's normal every day. And um, because of these things, stuff like big data, it, it's no longer scary. Um, if you think back to even just like six years ago or something, 
the, the whole Facebook big data issue um, where, you know, there was a big uproar and everyone, but then now people are less bothered by it because they see, look, yes, this exists. Yes, data is everywhere. We recognize people are using that to do stuff for us and we're not as scared of it anymore. We don't think it's big brother anymore. And that's absolutely critical to, if you consider where we are right now in our timing from a tipping point perspective for this sort of technology to be really utilized. Uh, and by that, what I mean is customers are far more aware than they've ever been about what their options are, what they should be able to expect. And they're very much uh, less tolerant of, of poor service. Customers go onto websites these days and they go, uh, I expect you to treat me better because I've been here before, because you put a cookie on my computer and you know who I am, you know what I search for, and you can show stuff to me. Uh, they also want that when they do other things, but we're, we're, we're failing to do it for them. So at the moment, we've got all this data sat there, all these call recordings that we don't do anything with, but we have customers that would relish the opportunity to have better service based on all of that information and data. So that brings me on to the next slide, which is unleash your call recordings. Give them the power, give them the freedom to actually be used for something and actually use them to improve the customer's experience in an automated way. Um, so that's my rally chant for today. Um, by the way, um, Auto Analytics works across every single channel, just to point that out. Um, and we're also uh, about to launch the ability to automatically detect uh, languages. So um, if, once you switched it on, and it knows it's looking for languages. It, if, if a conversation happens, then it will be picked up and translated in the transcriptions. So some uh, some really cool stuff happening in our space at the moment with, with this tech. That's me done. Uh, Rob, I love it. Thank you so much for for doing that. I think... I come up for air now. <laughs> just the way that you've taken us through that as well. Um, I would definitely have put myself more in the tired i guess is a nice way to set tired of uh, yes yeah. because of all the things that you mentioned at the outset which is is it a vanity metric are customers tired of it how is it being used how does it get influenced and is it actually generating any real improvements but what you've shared and the work that you guys have been doing and have now got is as you say this kind of engine that's running in the background that's using stuff that's already there so yeah, then it's, kind of revitalize NPS. It's 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 time. Yeah, it's time for a new wave. Like in the same way that it was embraced like twenty years ago when it was first released as a metric, we need to do it justice. And you know, it, I've seen, I've seen. I know even if you're not an advocate or a fan of it, I I've seen companies use it to great effect. I've been part of voice of customer programs for businesses in I think every single kind of. Uh, vertical market uh, of contact centers in all sorts of sizes so i've seen it put to good good use i've seen it you work effectively so if people can use it effectively then so can other people um mm. and i think that we shouldn't um we shouldn't necessarily blame the metric because it probably is banana armor syndrome uh and maybe just maybe uh you know the the time is now when you think about all the the things that have aligned at the same time to make uh the the solutions to, to those problems come about yeah we couldn't do this five years ago because we didn't have you know the 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 advancement in the uh in the large language models that we use to do the ai um analytics but we do now so let's let's use them let's put them to good use you can save people so much time and you can improve your customer's experience so easily by just kind of getting it in and understanding what's going on. Now, you mentioned Bananarama. Darren is in agreement with me, Darren Gracie, that you definitely should have sung oh, the lyrics. I can't remember them. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to Google them. <laughs> um, Neris, the lovely Neris Caulfield, legend of our industry, says, I have a 10.30 meeting, but this is fun. And then she has, we're going to go through this. Um, GBT in the world of metrics where feedback's gold, a shining star emerges, a story to be told. NPS creation, a tool so grand, guiding <laughs> our decisions, helping us to understand. Rob Wilkinson, a fan of ba ba Bananarama's beat, 
knows the value NPS can bring. It's no small feat. But careful we must be with insights in hand to make them actionable, to truly understand. Analyze the feedback and craft a plan to turn our customer's voice into a guiding hand. Rob Wilkinson reminds us to act and, and then I've got nothing else. That yeah. is... That's brilliant. <laughs> I love that. that. Brilliant. And I and I know that Neris is probably wrapping that right now. Yeah, I'm hearing it in. Yeah, definitely. Oh wow. I love that. Yeah. I've no one's ever written me anything like that before. That's ace. Well, um, as well as as well as that, and um we can share that comment and this this show's obviously recorded, but you did mention that people can obtain the slides from you and uh, and I guess follow up and have oh, the conversations. Yeah. Or ask me anything. Yeah, you know, there's no obligation. I'm not a salesman. I'm, I'm someone who helps customers get the most out of our kit. So um, if you just want to ask questions with no kind of fear of being sold to, then yeah, I'm, my inbox is open and my phone number is on my profile. And yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to discuss that with anybody. And I think that's true of all of you guys, which is, you know, those things are important to me in terms of partnerships as well, that it's you're genuinely interested and you could hear your passion come through then about you know this is this is something that could be used for everyone's benefit so it it is brilliant now you were bang on the button in terms of time um i'm going to leave That's you in terrible. here i'm not i'm not going to give you a break um <laughs> cuz maybe we have just quickly got time i'm going to and i hopefully you'll be here rob at this but I, the second ever audio um, event that I'm doing is going to be next Wednesday. So if you can join us, the first one was really enjoyable. Uh, it was a brand new thing for me to do in uh, LinkedIn land in, in audio. But it was a really nice chat. We had about six different speakers. Uh, it's very on the hoof. Um, and we're going to be – last week we talked about uh, – attracting talent this week or sorry next week we're going to be talking about um those inductions and academies and and things like that now rob i'm sure you must have been part of run academies or grad bays or what did you call them um nurseries in the <laughs> early days which is so patronizing but we moved on from that. Um, that shows how long it is since I'm doing it, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to, yeah, we used to have a nursery in the early days. Um, but no, grad base academies, I've been in contact centers that have used all of those subjects. I actually tried um and, and launched a a, a a a business kind of oh gosh, a while ago, um, that was an online tool where people who wanted to uh, get jobs in contact centers could take free training courses and yet so absolutely i mean it was before linkedin so it was kind of um yeah it, it, yeah it, it's not here now so it didn't work but but it, it's the, the, i appreciate the importance of training from uh day to day but also from uh, onboarding that you know that arm around someone as they first come in yeah it's uh it's super important well, I hope you can join me in the break room then, Wednesday, the 24th of July, 12 to 1, um, to, where we will be talking about this and probably loads of other things. Jordan agrees with us. Brilliant, Neris. Thank you, Rob. Great slides. Uh, Darren says he calls them training bays, which is probably uh, a, a nicer one than the ones we came up with. <laughs> I think based on last week's uh, session, that should be renamed, Darren, to Education Bays. Just, just yeah. a subtle one. Okay, well, we are coming. You're going to stay with me, Rob, to, right till the end. Um, okay. But I'm not going to let you off the hook easily. Uh, maybe instead of my video going out, you could sing the whole of Banana Rama if I line up the music. <laughs> uh, do I have to? Hang on, I just look the no, words I'm up. joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but genuinely, thank you so much. It was really insightful. I think, like I said, it's a, it's a subject that has become, it's a difference between slow and fast thinking, right? My fast thinking discounts MPS and goes, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I know it's use, but my now, thanks to you, the slow thinking is, wait a minute, there's something here. It can be, it can be used far better than perhaps my perception of it being used has been. 
maybe we need uh, a, a net promoter 3.0. They've, they've had a 2.0, so maybe we need a 3.0. And, you know, um, that's no bad thing. Uh, the worst thing we can do is kind of let things get stale. Um, we don't do it with anything else in our world. You know, we're always chomping at the bit to drive improvements. And uh, there's always, a, a, I, know, I know there's always a new technology coming to the fore. Um, or a new solution or a, a supposed magic bullets. Um, but, um, you know, this is, this is it's, it's important to mention that this is the sort of thing that we're, we're so, uh, we believe so much in, in, in XMPS and the, the kind of role that it's going to play is that it, it, it becomes, it's a feature of no matter what plan, no matter what way you join, you know, you use our solution. So every single customer is going to have this automatically as part of the tool just because we're bringing all those conversations in why not put that in there so that you can at the very least filter on detractors in order to figure out who needs to have a score a, a call mm. QA things like that so mm. yeah I, I'm, I'm uh, I, I can wax lyrical about it all the time but um, yeah I won't, I won't talk too much well Rob thank you very much and of course this will be converted into uh, audio as well so this will feature as a get out a rap podcast that hopefully will be out tomorrow if i pull my finger out um thank you everyone that's watching Neris. thank you for your rap i don't know how you i don't know how you do it um that's cool <laughs> very 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 cool perhaps the two of you can do a duo rob maybe i'm up for that yeah you'd have to ask Neris. obviously it's up to up to Neris. And everyone else has commented and watched. Thank you very much. I hope to see you all on next week's show. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day.